Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. After the conquest of Mecca, which was a decisive defeat to all pagan Arabs, today, inshallah, we will talk on Ghazwat Hunayn, the Battle of Hunayn. Now the remaining powers to fight Muslims are only Hawazan and Thaqif, biggest tribes in Arab lands so far, and their allies like Nasr, Bani Hinal, and they are all called Qais Aylan. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had already stayed in Mecca 19 days and it was an opportunity to silence now once and for all all these Arabs. So he moved towards uh, Hunayn, it's a valley at the same time, with his 10,000 that came with him in, in Fath Mecca, and another 2000 that uh, became Muslim and the, these are the uh, crucial point that these uh, 2000 that uh, they are newly converts there will be some problems with them because of their new Islam but uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi will try to tackle this uh, new issue. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam borrows uh, 3000 spears from his uh, cousin Nawfal ibn al-Harith ibn Abd al-Muttalib and 100 shields from Safwan ibn Umayyah. Sahaba and all these 12,000 were uh, moving towards Hunayn. Uh, suddenly these 2,000 newly converts, they saw some people or they saw a tree that the, in the Jahiliya they used to uh, hang their swords to it and slaughter there. So it's a kind of idol there. They said, oh Prophet, uh, make to us an dati an wat. It means a tree like their tree. Uh, Prophet Muhammad was, was amazed and he, he uh, wondered at this and he he said, Allahu Akbar, inna has sanan. The, uh, these are the uh, sunan of Allah in his cone. These are the, the universal laws and rules that these new converts, they tend to, uh, you know, uh, have this uh, weak faith. So you have to deal with them little by little. Never con consider them as a kuffar, by the way, because this is an Islamic rule. So Prophet Muhammad said, no, wallahi, you said like uh, the children of Bani Isa said to Moses, grant us an ilah, an idol like their idol. Grant us another God like their God. And also again once they passed this problem of uh, attributing a an Nigel apart from Allah, then he, Prophet Muhammad heard some Muslims or some new Muslims said, oh now we are numerous. Uh, no one will defeat us. And uh, Nabi Sallallahu hated the same because it's proudness. And maybe this is why they lost in the first round of the war. The leader of uh, Ghazwat Hunayn, the leader of Hawazan and Thaqif, Malik ibn Auf, chose to take with him 24,000 camels and 600 heads of sheep and all their women, all their infants, uh, so that the, uh, his warriors will not flee. And when the Sahabas reached the valley of Hunayn, uh, Malik ibn Auf, uh, preceded, unfortunately preceded to this valley and they made some traps. Once the Muslims passed in the valley, uh, thousands of archeries were hit towards them. So they ran away. So they lost the first round of the war. The second round is the mistake of the Hawazan and Thaqif. They didn't chase Muslims. So Muslims made a counterattack and from this victory came. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asks Al-Abbas, MashaAllah, his voice was better than today's loudspeaker. He uh, shouted and uh, announced that, uh, where are you, the uh, people of the tree, people of Ashab al-Samura, those who made pledge with the Prophet. So they heard Al-Abbas, only few stood with the Prophet Muhammad stood firm. Nabi sallallahu was very brave and courageous. He rushes towards the enemies and says, Ana Nabi la kadib, ana ibn Abdul Muttalib, was very brave and courageous. And Abu Bakr, you know, uh, holding, his, his horse not to rush towards the enemies. Suddenly all the Muslims came back to the battle area. Now let's talk on the causes of this uh, first round loss. The causes are the proudness of some Muslims. Many Muslims didn't take arms and weapons with them. These 2000 new converts were with little faith and also they were not organized. The causes of victory are Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood firm with the Muslims with him. Uh, Number two, Muslims came back and rushed back to the voice of Al-Abbas. Number three, the non-Muslims enemies didn't chase Muslims. Number four, the Nabi Sallallahu throws dust in the eyes of all the enemies. No individual from them except that uh, dust reached his eyes. And also the dua of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the coming and the descension of angels. And this is what Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says on this ghazwa. لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَوَاطِنَ كَثِيرَةٍ وَيَوْمَ حُنَيْنٍ 
ويوم حنين إذ أعجبتكم كثرتكم فلم تغن عنكم شيئا فلم تغن عنكم شيئا وضاقت عليكم الأرض بما رحبت ثم وليتم مدبرين ثم أنزل الله سكينته على رسوله وعلى المؤمنين وأنزل جنودا لم تروها وعذب الذين كفروا وذلك جزاء الكافرين here the non-Muslims lost the war and ran towards their fort and besieged themselves, including Hawazan and Thaqif. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi moves towards them to besiege them more than 19 days, but nothing, no one came out except some few, some 23, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam secured them. This shows how truthful the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam withdraw because they were just like rats or like foxes in their holes. The Muslims ask the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make dua against them and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says Allahumma ahdi thaqif and wa'ti bihim Allah guide thaqif and help them to come as Muslims. After that, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left the booty behind them in Ja'rana then he goes back to the booty to uh, distribute it fairly and no, no needle, no even needle was taken from the booty because one of the Sahabas he took a needle and he uh, gave it back to the Sahaba. Here Nabi Sassim focuses on distributing the booty more on the new converts in Mecca. He gave uh, for example individuals 100, 100 comes because they were numerous uh, plenty of uh, booty like uh, 24,000 only camels let alone the, cow, the, the, the cows and the sheep and etc. So he gave uh, an individual from Mecca only one individual like uh, Abu Sufyan and he his two sons 300 camels he gave uh, individuals 50 each 40 each until the Ansar from Medina gave them uh, only a few things so they uh, complained and Sa'd ibn Ubadah came to the Prophet Muhammad to give him the complaint of the Ansar Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam seizes the opportunity and goes to them he gave Quraysh uh, more booty until they said the Nabi gives the Ata the booty that he fears no poverty. And uh, Sheikh Muhammad Al Ghazali says in his book Al Mujtama Al Madani Fi Aid Nubu, page 219, that some people are guided towards Allah with money exactly like a cattle is guided uh, with Al Barsim, with herbs and grass. And I think this is disrespectful to the Sahaba because it was Al Mu'allafati Quluboom, Prophet Muhammad softened their hearts because they were new converts. If he is right, it's, it depends. I don't know, but uh, I mean, I think, I think to my mind, this is disrespectful respectful uh, this saying towards the Sahaba. So when Nabi Sassim talks to the Ansar and says that you may say, you may, he even anticipates their complaints, he says to them you may say that you came to us poor and we supported you, you were belied, betrayed, banished and poor and we supported you. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says I may say to you also you were lost and Allah guided you through me and you were dispersed and scattered and Allah united you through me etc. and you were poor and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala enriched you through me. Yet Ya Ansar you will go back to Medina with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so never fear, you will take the Prophet with you. And I am just softening their heart, their hearts with because they are new converts with this lu'a of dunya, very little amount of the dunya. He considered all this little amount, but you will take the Prophet back with you. The Sahaba were embarrassed because the Prophet talked to them like this, because they talked to the Prophet like that too. So they were embarrassed and started crying too. The Hawazan themselves will guide the Thaqif and they will all become Muslim. How? Let's know how, because they themselves come back to the Prophet Muhammad and ask their booty back. So they said, we are now Muslim and we want our money back. So Prophet Muhammad makes the adhan, gathers people and asks people to give them back the booty. Imagine, wallahi, yes, half of the Sahaba they gave back uh, to, to them and most of them became Muslim little by little until all of them became Muslim Alhamdulillah. So indeed Prophet Muhammad has softened the hearts of the Quraysh people and we know by experience Quraysh people the people in Mecca are not like in Medina. The Medina people until today they are soft hearted and now Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is dealing with the Bedouins they are harsh 
uh, harsher than Medina people, uh, one of the Bedouin, he came to the Prophet and dragged him from his neck until he made some traces in his neck. He said, the give me from the money Allah gave you. It's not your money and the money of your, of your kids. SubhanAllah, but Nabi was very tender with them. He was patient though. Another one came and said, This booty distribution, you don't, it's not sincere for the sake of Allah. And the Nabi said, Wayhak, beware, who's gonna be fair if I am not? And the Nabi sallallahu telling to someone, glad tidings, inshallah I will give you. He said, you say too much this glad tidings, I will give you, I will, I will give you. When are you going to give me? And guess what? Suddenly Hawazan came as Muslim and Malik ibn Auf too came as Muslim. How this happened? Allahu Akbar. He is the biggest enemy and he became Muslim. How did this happen? The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sends to him and says to him, if you become Muslim, I will give you 100 camel, give you back your family, your money, your property and your kids. So he came as Muslim, Allahu Akbar. And suddenly Malik ibn Auf starts praising the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with some Ash'ar poems. And guess what? The leader of Thaqif, one of the leaders of Thaqif, Nu'aym ibn Mas'ud Thaqafi, imagine the one with Abu Bakr incident, he became Muslim too. And the one who uh, took the distribution of the booty by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very, very fair. Until the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asks them to uh, anyone to take anything from the booty, he will bring it back, even a needle. And that's when Uqayl ibn Abi Talib took a needle from the booty, gave it to his wife to sew something and he brought it back. This is the distribution. This is why people nowadays, they hate Islam, because if Islam rules, no capitalism, no no stubbornness and no barbarity. And the money distribution will not be taken only by the rich. Now the, the rulers and the leaders of today's world, they are arrogant to accept Islam. Anything Islamic, they will fight you. Why? Because they want only to take the lion's share and leave the peoples live in uh, poverty. That's what they were. The, the rich becomes richer and the poor becomes poorer. All this is based on riba. And that's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as I said in uh, Fatih Makkah, the first thing that he prohibited, riba, usury. Because this is the biggest evil ever. After the Islam of Ka'b bin Zuhair, now media is in the hands of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Now he has both economy and media. And this is why Illuminati guys, the Masons, they uh, hold economy and media. If you have these two, you will rule the world. The good outcomes from this war is that a Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praises the Ansar and the offspring of the Ansar. And also uh, the Sahaba, the Muslims give back the booty to Hawazan and Thaqif and they are the last tribes to fight in uh, Mecca. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sets them free after they become Muslim and gives them back uh, their property. And that now Hawazan and Thaqif and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will use them as uh, his weapons and they will be the ones that will take the lead and fight any other tribes uh, that will ever think of fighting Muslims in Medina which is the capital city of uh, Arabia. And also new sarayas by the Sahabas, by the Muslims to destroy idols. And also and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi will impose uh, zakat, uh, obligatory charity on all the Arabs in the Arabic Peninsula. Any tribe to refuse it, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi will send saraya to take it from them. And also what we deduce from this Ghazwat Hunayn is that the uh, Muslim ruler should have this uh, value and uh, elite prestige amongst his people, not like what uh, Morsi, Muhammad Morsi in Egypt did. He said, I will just rent a house, I will not have any mat to walk on and, and people started to despise him. No, uh, Abba Ishaq al Huwaini responded to him, he said, no, you should have this prestige of the elites of the presidential value, the Ubbaha. Now we will see only events between Ghazwat Hunayn and Ghazwat Tabuk, the wife of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Zainab will die and uh, the Islam of Adi ibn Hatim, the intercession of his sister to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and also the Nabi وسلم, in silence or will uh, send sarayas, to send his soldiers to anyone that refuses to give jizya, either jizya or zakah. If you don't want to become Muslim, jizya. If you are Muslim, you must give the zakah. In the next session, inshallah, we will talk on Ghazwat Tabuk. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.